Alright, sorry about that. Um, that's what happens when you're using a family um, machine. Uh, the battery was dead. And I didn't pay attention. So Anyway, so that's what you do. Is Here, let me put a little more glue here and glue it back down its spot. So, just kind of glue it. There we go. And then you just keep going around, making it all about the same size. Let's see. Helps if you wind it the right direction. And I always use one of those hot, the light hot glue guns because I don't want to ever burn myself. So I can actually touch the hot glue and it doesn't burn and I like that much better. So you just wrap it around a couple times until you get enough string. And then you glue it off and then the really cool thing about this is that once it's dry you can literally lift it off like that and you have your ribbon or your hemp string so then as I'm dropping things I just love how things never go Quite right when you're on camera. So then you have your hot glue piece right there. So you just kind of move it out of the way so you don't see it so much. Okay, so you have that. And then what you need to do is you need to cut your mat, your photo mat for your photo. And so for that, I am going to pick some papers from this stack right here. This one actually um, would be great because it's just the perfect size to do a photo mat. Um, let's see. I love these papers. Let's see. What do I feel like making my mat with? I think I want my mat with this. So then you just take that out and then we're going to do a four by six. Well it's already six so you just take your piece and cut off part of it. So now you have your four by six photo mat right like that. So that will go there and then you need to back that. And what I like to use for backing, especially if you've got it on hand, are these stacks right here. This is a 5x7 stack, great for photo matting. Um, this one is the, hmm, uh, oh, Nursery Tales. This one I also got from the outlet and uh, from Karen. She picked it up for me and sent it, I believe. If I'm wrong, I'm sorry. I try to always remember who sends me stuff. I think maybe we'll go a brighter pink. Bring in more pink tones. So, okay, that'll work. I I don't like to be too picky because it takes too much time. So what for this one, I'm going to rip this one just like I did all the rest. Just don't want to rip too much because we want to have some around the edge. So... Just making sure I'm still recording. I think once you have a problem with your camera, you always are leery the rest of the film thinking that it's not going to work again. <laughs> so you don't want to miss like half the procedures because then people want to know, how did you do that? So, 
And I always rip towards myself, which gives me the... I'm probably ripping a little much, but hopefully there'll be enough to go around the edge. If not, I'm going to have to rip again. You can be a lot more careful about how much paper you're ripping off when you're not in a hurry. But since I'm in a hurry, I try to do it this way. Okay, now that'll be perfect. So, then again, I take my Distress Inks. And then I want to ink, ink it up. And there's no science. You just ink it as much as you want, or as little as you want, or... <sighs> However, I don't have any preference of, like, how it's done. I just want a little color on there so that it doesn't look homemade as much. I want it to look finished. And, you know, since you're doing the white doilies, you could leave all these white. And it would look good, too. I just like sort of the burnt edged look. So that's good enough. All right, so then you have this to go here. And we're going to actually put that over top of that here in just a second. So I'll just move it to the side so we can glue it down. Let me make sure you guys can still see everything. Yep, you can. Okay. The weird thing is, is my camera's got to be to the side of me, so I cannot see what you can see. I can only guess I'm in the right spot. middle and just kind of put it down. All right, so then we have our doilies from before. And so because I want a little more volume, we're going to stick them under the photo mat. Just because I think that'll look good. Just a little something peeking through. Gives it a little dimension. And you can use lace if you want to use lace. Um, I just like how doilies are really flat and uh, they don't take up a lot of bulk. So I just stick that there. And they don't have to be perfect. Perfection is overrated, right? Okay. So I'm going to rip this glue off because I don't need that one. And just toss it in the trash. Okay. So this one is a little bit messier than what I'm used to doing. But because I have the glue on this one, and you don't really want the glue to be seen, I always just try to cover it up with something else. That way you don't see it. The problem with this one is I kind of made it a little bigger. And so I'm trying to get it to where... They don't, that they're more of like all together than separating or separated. There, I kind of twisted it up. That'll, that'll be better, much better. Okay, so what I do with this one is instead of gluing the that down, I just glue, put some glossy accents on the center. Um, I do I remember doing this. I do glue down this one section. To hold it in place so that way when I'm using the glossy accents it's staying in place at least in that spot okay and you know it's center ish it doesn't have to be perfect you know again you know nothing in life is always perfect so we'll fix that here so then we've got our string going around in a circle and that doesn't look as neat as my other one because I think my circle got kind of, you know, messy with the whole um, being on camera thing. And you just can play around with it and try to do it less and less messy, however you want. But that'll, it'll work. It won't be perfect, but it'll work good enough. Okay, 
So we have that done and we're coming along pretty good in, in a short amount of time. So what we have next to do is um, we're going to put um, some string here, like a ribbon. But because I'm kind of doing this one backwards a little bit, we're going to put it on this side over here. And I'm also going to just stick it up a little bit higher. I have lots of smaller pieces, but I don't think I have any that are the right size. So I just cut off a piece. Um, and I'm going to put the bow up here. Just because I think it will look good. And, you know, I never do the thing, same thing. You know? Doing everything the same every time is boring. And so, whenever I make projects, I always do one-of-a-kind projects. Special, just for, you know, because I make so many, I would hate to do them all the same. Because that's just not fun. Plus, you know, you have such beautiful papers nowadays. Who wants to use the same paper over and over and over? I don't know. Nobody. Okay, so we're going to do that. I'm going to slide it down just a little bit because I like it right there. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is our banners. And how I do my banners is I take, you can take scrap pieces of paper. Um, you can come in here and find really cute um, patterns. I like these. Those might look good. Um, let's see. You know, I think you can always make projects better when you think them out thoroughly before you do them. But, you know, that might be boring. It's always fun to kind of do stuff as it comes. So I think I'm going to use some of this paper too. Might as well. That's what I like about little 6x6 six six sheets. Is they have really great small patterns. And you can do a lot with them. So we're going to move this out of the way for a moment. And I'm going to use this stamp that I have. I just have it on acrylic block. And I actually found this one at a thrift store. So I have no idea where I got it from. It came in a package. Maybe that might help you guys find it. Um, it was in a baggie, a plastic baggie at the thrift store. But it had all of these in them. And you might be able to figure out if they're from a, they were one brand or what but I use this one you can use any of them I just like the plain ones because then I can do them on whatever pattern paper I want so I just take it and ink it up a little bit and then go one two three and you just need enough ink on there to see where to cut because you're going to ink it again anyway so hopefully that's all of that color I'll need. But I can always come in and make more. So that's okay. And I want to make sure these are all in the same direction. And the great thing about these is if you have extras left over, you can keep them in a little bin or something and save them for later because... I mean, you can never have too many of these. And I kind of went over on that one a little bit, so probably have to just chuck one of those. Okay. So I think I have enough. Sorry, didn't mean to bump you. So then what I do is I cut them out. And this is probably the most boring part for you guys, again, is all the cutting. But really, luckily for this project, there's not too much. So, I usually just go through and snip as fast as I can. I do a lot of this kind of stuff when I'm watching TV or um, listening to music in my craft room. So, it usually goes really quick. So, this one... I'm just going to keep that one and throw that one away. This one, you would think I'd keep the other one, but this one is full. And yeah, there's a little ink there, but I'll ink it and you won't even know. So, 
to me it just is quicker to do it this way than the other way. And I don't know how many of these I'm going to actually end up using. It all changes it depending on how much string you have sticking out. So I'm just going to do, like for now, I'm going to cut two of each color. But, or actually four of each color, sorry. And then save the other ones. So, four of each color. So that's this one. Save those for later in case I need them. Let's see. There's four. So, have you guys seen that Prima is doing ambassadors? I think that's really cool. I'm excited for that. I actually asked to be a part of that. So, we'll see if that happens might not work out, but, you know, you can always dream and hope, right? My friend Karen is one of the new ambassadors, and she's in California, and she's a good friend and scrapbooky friend from my Facebook, and it's funny because a lot of us met in, we call it the MySpace days. We met there, and then a lot of us all switched over when Facebook became cooler. Okay, I'm almost done. And you know, you could get these done faster if you like line them right up together, but I just stamped them out real quick and so it does make for more cutting, but it's all right. Yeah, usually I like to do my videos where I just show you the project at the end. Because I figure most of you guys kind of know how to do this stuff anyway. And don't want to be bored with it. But I have a friend, Anne, who does YouTube videos. Tons and tons of YouTube videos. And uh, we've gotten to know each other because of Graphic 45. We like following each other and seeing what each other does and commenting on each other's product projects so um, but she does lots and lots of tutorials and she shows you how to do everything and I just haven't because I have kids and a husband and you know we're busy and it takes a lot longer to do a video this way and I just thought well maybe people don't want to see the whole thing you know might be boring but then I realized you know I like watching and stuff so why wouldn't I so here's that one that a little messed up but that's okay it's gonna go on the bottom and I'll show you what I mean just a minute so what I love about these papers is they really go well together um, when I do projects I tend to stick mostly with a collection doing the whole project because if you don't the paper colors begin to kind of clash a little bit and then they don't look as good. See this is what happens. You get brown fingers. But that's okay. Black and brown are my favorite colors. So if I could be darker I would. I just like it. We're running out of ink, so gotta ink it a little bit. That's what I like about these blending foams is they hold a lot of ink for a long time, so you don't have to. And I don't like to scratch across my pad. I used to do that all the time, and I'd wear out pads all the time. And I used to have to rebuy pads all the time, but now I buy the reinkers. And uh, oops. I just lost one. I'm going to have to wash my table. It's getting all dirty. Okay, so got all those banners done. And so we have this right here. So what we want to do is we want to put the banners. And so I'm going to scoot this up just a little bit. Because 
I don't like it. Okay, how I make my banners 3D are these. And I don't know if they're any good, <laughs> but I've been using them a long time, so I sure hope they are. Um, I buy them at the dollar store, and they come in a huge pack. This is almost a brand new one, so I've only used a couple off of here. And I just use them on the back. Um, just one. And then I add a little tiny bit of hot glue. And that one's kind of goopy, but... Anyway, so a little hot glue so that when you stick it to the hemp that it sticks really good. And so I'm going to just go ahead and do these. I'm going to make sure that you can see me good. There we go. That's better. A little hot glue. And there's this one that's got the the bad stamp on it. And hot glue. Alright. I hope this video isn't too long for you guys. I hope you guys don't get too bored. But you'll know how to do a really cute layout from start to finish, and you can make lots of them. And you can do them all different colors and use up your scraps. And because these banners you could use scrap pieces for, especially if you like to use lots of different colors. Okay, so I'm going to do one more. I like them to look like they're going around with the the rope. Okay, so then the next ones you just use your pop more pop dots. So these actually have two, one on the bottom one and one on the top. And then you just lay them directly on top of the other to give dimension. I almost stuck it over the wrong color. And you could tuck that up underneath it too if you want, but I'm not going to because I'm going to put a flower ah, over there. So I just love these pop dots because oh, they're, they're a dollar. The dollar store. How can you not love that price? I just hope they're acid free because if not, that might not be cool, but. I never looked at the package. And that one's a little crooked, but it's okay. Because remember, perfect is boring. If everything was perfect, then you wouldn't have anything cool to look at. So. There we go. All right, so there we got our 3D banner. And as you can see, it pops up off the page really well. And it just gives it so much more dimension. Okay, so let's see. The next things we have on here are the buttons, or the snaps, and the flowers, and the little scrolly thing. The little scrolly thing I'm not going to put on this one because I made that one and I can't find where I put all the rest of them. Um, I put them somewhere. So we don't know where they went. Um, so we're going to skip that part. But we're going to put our flowers on. And uh, so um, I like to do at least two layers of flowers because if you don't it just doesn't look That's good. Um, and I think I'm going to use 
like a bigger one and a smaller one because I think that might look better there. Kind of like that. I don't like to do them like right above each other or right below because that just makes it a little too, um, I like it to be a little wonky. Does that make sense? I hope. Hopefully it does. Okay. And on the other one, I had the flowers on the side. Um, and again, it's only because, you know, I had them on that side. It's just because I don't like to do things the same. So, I like to do things differently. Because it makes it special. One of a kind. And it's still going to look just as good. It'll just look different. So we're going to put that one there. And this one here. And I kind of try to offset the petals a little bit. Just because it looks better. Alright, and then I have a container somewhere. Oh yeah, right here. That's got, you know, some buttons and stuff in it. So I'm going to use more of my wood buttons. I love these. I'm not sure where I got them. I think I got them at a thrift store. Love them. And I'm not going to do these this time on up here because it's pretty dark already. And again, I don't want to do everything the same. So um, I had some um, scraps. So what I'm going to do is I'm just putting it up through the bottom and down through the top like that. And then I'm going to tie it off. just in the back so that they don't come undone and then I just put a little hot glue over them and then let them dry okay and then here's another one up through the bottom down through the top and then you can tie it off like that oh there goes stuff on the floor. So what happens when you got so much stuff in your scrapbook room and you bump it, <laughs> it tends to go cascading down. So I just cut off the extra so that you don't see it. And it's okay that it's, you know, bumpy because the flowers are going to stick out a lot. Anyway. So then glob of glue and then just pop it down in the center. Keep that little piece later. I can use it on another button or something. I don't like to throw anything away. That's why I got so much stuff in my scrapbook room. All right, stick that there. Okay, so this one is, you know, it could be done if you if you wanted it to be done, but I really, 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 really like. Um, you know, these pads, because they have all these cool little embellishments in them. And so there are some in here. I got some from the other stack last time, but they have little, little tags and butterflies. Let's see. Make sure that, yeah, those are the ones I wanted, I think. Yeah, so just pull some of these out. And these are a little bit smaller than the last ones that I had. The last one I had was bigger, but we're just going to cut them out. And then if they don't have to be perfectly cut because I'm going to ink around the edges and you won't see if there's any white. And I think I want the bird bird in the nest. That one's pretty. Okay. There we go.
let's see. Then, then you just decide where you want to add your embellishments to. You know, like what part will look cute. -est. So maybe. Maybe by the by the bow. So I want to bring that bow a little bit further down. Maybe I'll go like that. I don't know. You'll have to t write to me and tell me what you guys think. So I'm going to put some thickers because of this rope. You don't want it to um, hide too much back there. Anyway, I think that looks pretty good. Um, you know, I might add, go in and add some bling to it. But for now, I think it's probably, we'll just call it done um, for the video. And uh, make sure and check out my Facebook page to see the final photo and see um, how it looked, how it turned out. So um, anyway, I want to just thank you guys for watching. I appreciate all of my followers and uh, subscribers, I guess you want to call them. And uh, you guys are great, and uh, I really appreciate it. And um, you guys keep me going. You guys inspire me to um, keep creating and, uh, you know, just making videos. Thanks a lot. Bye.